Amanita Design is one of my favorite studios, and they've got a game called Creeks that just came out on Apple Arcade. So I'm going to find out what it is. I really don't know the first thing about it at all, but I have a lot of trust in this studio. That's kind of, you know, there's a lot of uh, folks who feel like sort of the, the, the received wisdom is that you just need to constantly make sequels in the same series again and again and again, because once you've got an audience, it's too risky to make anything else. Um, but I really like it when a studio does a good job of branding themselves. You know, like, I think Pixel Jump does a great job of this. Like, every single game, with a few exceptions, that uh, that uh, Q Games makes uh, is very different from all the others. Like, they, they, they just make games that are all over the place, doing crazy, weird, experimental stuff. And they just give them all the name Pixel Junk something. So the games are all hugely different, but they've sort of created this brand called Pixel Junk that, you know, people who come to like it will just try anything these people do. And Amanita Design is similar, uh, similar to that for me. It's like, they've created this brand which is, we make a bunch of really weird, interesting, hand-drawn, artsy games. And, you know, and, so, and I like all of them, you know, even though they're all very different from each other, uh, they have a few things in common uh, that make me love them. And so, yeah, so I, I stick around for them. So this is Creeks. I don't know the first thing about it, and we're going to press, press New Game. All right, so I've got... I've got a left stick here. Oh, I wonder. Can I grab my controller? I wonder if my controller will work. Let's, let's give this a try. Since it's got virtual sticks. Oh, hey. Yeah, it does. Nice. Okay, I'll just chill back here with my controller. Don't have to touch the screen at all. All right. Well, back to my book, I guess. I hope this is just a game about fixing the light again and again while I'm reading. It's exactly the kind of game that I wanted tonight. Or maybe I'm going to get, like, what? what? I'll say electrocuted, and then I'll have a dream sequence. But now it looks like the dream sequence starts over here. And so far the game's living up to his name whenever I walk back and forth. I don't know if the audio is loud enough for you to pick it up, but he does make little creak sounds. Right. Gee, okay. Oh. Oh, yikes. <laughs> well, point of no return, guy. So Jedi Psychtrick says, it is at this moment that you find out what sort of pixel, light, a pixel art person you are. Uh, I, for one, am the sort who pieces out through the other door. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I am accustomed to with uh, Amanita Design Games like Samarost and Machinarium and Chuchel is that there's no failure states. So uh, it does give you a little bit of extra courage to go and explore bizarre nightmare worlds because you know that the studio is sort of, uh, you know, they're here to give you a weird, trippy experience, but not to punish you. This is a very complicated place. I 
I gotta say, this world fits together really nicely. I mean, this 2D art, you know, sometimes, like, Amanita Design will sometimes sort of make, like, part of the experience is how poorly the art fits together sometimes. You know, their, their Samorost games are sort of designed to be just a little weird and a kind of, I don't know, almost off-putting in the way that the art is just kind of, like, assembled from random pieces. But this character is actually really nicely and like interacting with the environment in ways that you know it doesn't feel like he should be able to it shouldn't it shouldn't work this well there are a lot of 3d games i've played that don't you know have the character move and connect as naturally with the environment all right so whoa okay this is the most convoluted path i have ever taken through a video game world <laughs> So I could jump down there. It seems like point of no return, though. Let's see what else I might have missed. All right, nothing up in here. I I missed another spot, too, but I don't want to go all the way back there. So I'm just going to assume that this is what I want to do. Yeah, it looks like I can't get back up. Just like in real life, I can't actually climb up things that most video game characters can climb up. All right, so I can not see. So I can either go sideways or down. Pfft. Um. Yep, I'm gonna try to get up here and then jump right back down again. I haven't yet figured out exactly. Oh, that was the tutorial. Okay, just they put me in a bunch of combinations of different situations where I had to learn how the stick and button movements came together. I didn't really feel like that was a tutorial. I felt like it was just a weird, silly part of the game. That's kind of nice. And then I knew intuitively to hold down and press A to uh, to jump off that ladder, even though they never actually taught me that one because. The control theory here is so consistent. And that's really nice when, when when the creators of a game can tell like not just that they've made arbitrary control decisions, but that they've put together a system of intuitive things that make sense together. So once you've learned a few of them, you can intuit the rest. They've done a really good job of that here. Ah! Um, oh. Oh, is that the first time I've ever died in an Amanita game? Okay. Um. I guess bad things happen to Chuchel sometimes, but. So, okay, so I feel like you have two options. One is. I walk very carefully. Oh. Oh, dang. I was hoping that this could... Oh, wait a minute. There we go. I thought I was going to make it fall off a cliff, but this is much more peaceful. <laughs> like that I can watch him sort of prance back to his little pillow. Packler D20 says, those clothes on the lines look like a skull. I didn't look at those, but now I want to look back at the video and find it. I feel like... Whoa. Whoops. <laughs> I feel like Amanita Design games are mostly about showing off their art. It's like, can we come up with an experience oh oops can we come up with a way to move you through one of our insane worlds mostly because they want to make the world hey buddy come here chase me chase me come on there we go Do, do, do. Yeah! Haha, <laughs> dumb dog. 
Um, except, wait a minute. Have, okay, so because I cross over my own path so many times, I keep feeling like I'm going back to where I started, but no, this is, this is a new place. Oh, and now I can get through there. All right, but now I've got to figure out how to get back across the dog. Um, I guess I can... Will he come to me over here? Okay, so if I get close enough to him, that will cause him to chase me. It's nice that they've got really simple rules for the way this dog behaves. There's no doubt, like once you actually figure it out, there's no kind of doubt about what's gonna happen. Oh, what's this? Wait, there's an eye. How do I use the eye? Do I just, does that just mean I wanna get closer to this? Oh, it's telling me where there's a peephole. Okay. All right. So there's a dog over there guarding some stuff. Got it. And I can go nowhere near there right now. Also got it. All right, so I got a crank. And then I can go the other direction. Oh, crap. I didn't even see that dog until I was too close. Okay, anyway. Right. Let's do that again. Man, this world is convoluted. Actually, for some reason, I think it reminds me a little bit of, um, uh, what's that game called? The one that you're like basically in hell and it takes forever. The longing. That's what it's called, the longing. Come on, turn it. Okay, so now I think my goal is to get the dog way over on this side. There we go. What is it that's moving around like this? Well, I guess we're gonna find out. It's some kind of giant scorpion. Cool. So Jedi Psychic says, I'm nearly finished with the longing. Once the summer class ends, I'm celebrating by finishing it up. Thank you so much for introducing me to it. You're the reason I bought it. Well, you know, I'm actually, I'm really curious how it's gone for you because I only played that early sequence. Like, I didn't actually stick with it over the long term. So I'll be really curious uh, to find out, you know, what experience you had with it. Uh, for anyone who's wondering, watching this later on YouTube, let me see. So this is about, I've been streaming for about 18 minutes. I'll put a, uh, a card up there so people can go and watch the longing uh, later on if they want to. And in the meantime, <laughs> so Jedi Secretrix is making fun of me for pointing out that uh, I love Eminita Design because uh, there's no fail states in their games. And then I just get my face eaten by a dog two times. Yeah, no, that that is true. But still, you notice how unpunishing that was. They basically figured, you know, each of these experiences with the dogs is encapsulated in a really you know tightly you know kind of closely controlled area and so when i get killed they can just backtrack me just a tiny bit and i'll try it again immediately so i think i can get down this ladder before the dog eats my face um ooh, a dresser i can climb up on it cool all right that works for me. So, man, these ladders are intricate. Ah, see you later. Oh. Oh, weird. It won't get in the light? Huh. Okay. <laughs> I love how 
proud and powerful my character feels. Okay, that foot did not look like a scorpion foot. It looked like a... Is there some kind of wyvern? I think it's a wyvern. My vote is a wyvern. Haha. <laughs> okay, now we get two dogs. Okay, I assumed that that first dog was just a one-off puzzle. This is apparently the dog dodging game. This is 100% the dodging of dogs. So I think I've got to get both dogs. How do I get two dogs over here? So I get that dog right there. And then maybe if I just get close only to the... Can you just go down, please? Oh, man, I've lost that dog. All right, hold on. I was My character was not responding to my controls the way I expected him to. All right, here we go. I'm going to run over here, go down, get that dog's attention, run over here, climb up. And then they're both there. Then I run over this way. Yikes. Okay. See you later, dogs. I don't want to be anywhere near you. Okay, do I want to be up here? What's up here? Oh, a light I can turn on. Okay. So uh, Jedi Citrix says, oh man, if you haven't played past what you did, uh, then I believe I've already shared too much about The Longing. Uh, the Longing is most definitely a game whose charm is in discovery. Okay, well maybe I need to reinstall it then. I just, I go through so many games. Most games, I don't play them again after the stream. I just, because there's just so many I want to get to. them. You see, like, I release a video every day. I play as many games in a year as there are days in the year, pretty much. With a few exceptions, you know, a few games that I'll play for, you know, longer. There's definitely games that I play hours and hours and hours in the background, and I only stream them maybe once or even not at all. Um, but a lot of the games I do here, I just play them the one time, um, because there's just so many I want to get to. But maybe that's one that is going to stand out that I need to... Check it out. <laughs> Pac3020 says, Wyvern versus Dragon discourse incoming. So the reason I think it's a Wyvern is because I saw a scorpion tail, and I'm pretty sure that's a Wyvern thing. But we'll see. Okay, well, I've got to do something that's going to make that light important at some point. Is there going to be a dog? Yes, there's going to be a dog. Is it coming? Hey, Mr. Doggins. Red eyes. There we go. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't really know what I've done to help myself here. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, maybe I do know. Come here, dog. Come here, dog. Doggy, 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 doggy. Ah! Coming. There we go. What happens if a dog is in the light? What? What? Okay. Here's what I have to point out. The design of the soundtrack of this game. The, like, like, if you're watching this on YouTube, like, s scrub it back and watch this, how the music kicked in at exactly the right moment as it was transforming. It kind of reminds me of that moment in Assassin's Creed 3 where you find out the twist and then an achievement pops up that says, how do you like them apples? Uh, one of my favorite moments in gaming. This is like that. It's like they played music that has this attitude of like, aha, you didn't even see that coming. And I did not see that coming. So they gave me a dresser to push earlier. And then give me this and like so I get to my brain is like I know what that is oh my gosh there was another one of those before was it a dog too holy crap and it's like it's having all of this like you know epiphany going on while the music is kicking in and getting all jazzy all of a sudden and I'm just like I don't know they really leaned hard into the emotional impact of this moment that I think in a lot of their games would have just been treated as yeah here, here's how this mechanic works but they really made me feel something it's cool um, I'm nervous, though. I definitely don't want to um, pull this too far out of the light. So let's just um, let's just not take it any further than that. Huh. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, folks in the chat are talking about wyverns versus dragons, <laughs> and uh, I love that, you know, so Pac-3020 just brought up that there might be a wyverns versus dragons debate, and Jedi Psychtrix is like, oh man, if you have pedantry about the distinction, I am down for that lesson. <laughs> I like people who appreciate the joys of pedantry. Okay, we've got a, uh, oh, I found a painting. Is that, is that it? Oh, can I, can I do something with the painting? Oh. All right, what? Well, is it just, is it just pretty? I pull, I pull a chain and it animates? Oh, this is fascinating. The movement's really subtle. It actually, like, it feels like what they're going for is there's a lot of games where they'll make something that looks handcrafted and they'll have it do a bunch of crazy stuff it wouldn't be able to do. It looks like they're actually trying to make this one feel like you could actually construct this, you know, using very, very old technology. That's, that's kind of neat. I like that. They, they actually, in a world this fantastical, they actually put effort into... Uh, into trying to make something feel like it actually could be grounded, it actually could exist. So Packler says, uh, it's a question of precision, I guess. Wyverns have four limbs, two wings, two legs. Dragons have four legs and wings. Scorpion tail is a thing I've also seen about wyverns too, but I don't know if that's a requirement. So I learned about wyverns in the Xanth novels, and they had scorpion tails in the Xanth novels. I don't know if that's a universal rule about wyverns, or... Or what? Okay, so do I need to turn this guy... I think I need to turn this guy into a thing. Oh, look how he just stumbles a little bit. And when it transforms while he's moving, it like jitters into place. And I don't think there's physics in this engine. I think that they just animated it to look natural when it transitions from, from walking into jittering. Okay, so now the question is... Okay, if I turn it off... Okay. Okay, so I want to turn that on. I want to... Okay. Interesting. Okay, I think I know what I need to do. I need... Eventually what I need is for that dog to walk itself under this light so that I can turn, while I'm standing here, so I can turn this light on and turn it into a thingy, uh, into a nightstand. So I think what I need to do is first push it under there. Then, wait, no, don't turn that light off yet. Wait, 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 wait. Turn this light on. Turn this light off. So now it's under the light I control from here. And then what I'm going to need to do, like I said, eventually I need to get under this light. What I need to do is run over here and catch it under this light. All right, here we go. Oh, that transition animation is great. There we go. All right, then let's just pull it a little bit. Just one step this way. Then turn on that. Wait, not that light. This light. By the way, notice my character can move it only in these discrete steps. Like, I can't move him any arbitrary amount. And they deliberately line up all the objects to be directly under one of the spots my character can move to. So, you know, technically, this is kind of a an unrealistic way for a person to walk to be only be able to move in discrete steps. But I think it's actually helping them make the moves look more natural because they always know where he's going to stop. They always know, you know, where he's going to be standing relative to an interactive object. And so by making his movements less realistic, by dis making them discrete this way, they're finding ways to actually, in practice, make them look more realistic. Okay, let's do this.
All right, we've been live for almost half an hour. I don't want this video to go much long. Whoa. Pff. Um. Okay. Maybe I'll. <laughs> you know what I should do? I should stop the video here on a cliffhanger. I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stop the video on a cliffhanger with dogs barking all around us. And we're just gonna leave it here. <laughs> I think this is the sound of a, of a dresser scraping across a floor.